I said the purpose of, of life insurance, in essence, is to replace lost income. Someone's li- someone's living, they're making an income, they die, that income is gone. It needs to be replaced. That's the purpose of life insurance. Life insurance really should not be a savings account. It should not be an investment account. It should it, it should be there to provide a, a, a death benefit and replace someone's income while they're working. It's their job income when they <clears throat> when they retire. It would either be a pension that ends when they die or Social Security that ends when they die. And so that's what you're looking to replace. Uh, so in general, most people have a lower need for life insurance. The average person has a much lower need from life insurance once they retire than when they're still working. Now, that being said, permanent life insurance is a great tool if you're needing it for estate planning purposes and to avoid taxes. And that's a completely different situation where once they once you um, retire, the two things is replacing Social Security income and providing uh, enough money for a funeral or a liquid cash for a funeral. Because a lot of people, times people have a paid for house, but they don't have that much money in the bank. And so it can help out with that. I'm not a big proponent of that, but it is there. Okay. Um, so this is not necessarily true as long as. So on a whole life policy, generally it has guarantees. And so it's, it guarantees to be able to give something. Um, and so if you pay the guaranteed amount, then yes, this is true. But a lot of policies, the interest rates change and that type of thing. And so the insurance agent will sell the policy and say, if you pay $500 a month, um, you're going to have $4 million when you uh, turn 65 in life insurance or whatever. Well, the problem is that's based on an interest rate today. If interest rates drop or the cost of insurance goes up inside that, which it can, then that $500 is not going to last until they die. And so you have issues where um, in the 80s and now even 90s, uh, well, in the 80s, interest rates were super high, 15%. So these people are selling life insurance policies, and they illustrated, meaning they gave a proposal assuming a 15% interest rate or a 10% interest rate for the entire policy. Well, if they took that out when they were 10, on a like their 10-year-old grandson, and now the grandson has it, and now they're, you know, they had it when they're 88, and now they're close to my age, you ain't getting 15%, you're getting about two. And so those policies are going to end up um, imploding on themselves and um, it's not going to last till they die. So it's not in that situation, it's not permanent. So I, that would be something I don't know if it's in here, but I'd put in there, you have to pay the guaranteed amount. So all policies are going to say, this is the guaranteed premium and it's going to last until whenever. And then here is the planned premium or current premium you might have. Most of the time with whole life, a true whole life policy, it is guaranteed. And so you don't have to worry about that. But universal life's generally are they're not sold at the guarantee because it's expensive because when you, when you can do better, you're also going to take a risk of doing worse. You have a, a whole life policy and has $40,000 of cash value and a $50,000 death benefit. You die. You're only getting the 50,000. You don't get that cash value, which is, um, I mean, it's a big deal. Uh, it's priced according to that, but a big deal. Universal life policies, <clears throat> a lot of times, that um, cash value does increase the the death benefit amount. You can do it that way. It, usually, there's going to, there's going to, on index there's going to be a minimum, so you're not going to make the full amount. But there's a threshold, so complete variable. You're going to have where it might make a hundred percent return one year, and it might be negative fifty one year. Um, usually, the index universal is going to have a. a they're going to say it's not going to do more than 10%. Insurance company takes that, but it won't do more less than 4%. And if it does less, the insurance company eats that. And so they, they give you a range. And that's kind of what happens. It's generally, you're not putting money in individual stocks. You're still putting in some type of it, um, a mutual fund, but there's some, some, there's no cap on your gain and no cap on your loss. Others, there's no cap on, there's no cap on your, there is a cap on the gain and a cap on the loss. Uh, if you can afford that easily, then possibly look at, at some permanent insurance. But until you get at least that minimum, if you have a, um, a spouse and kids, then I, I make sure you have enough to, to replace you, uh, your lost income. And we'd recommend between 10 and 15 times your annual income. And I would say in general, over the life of a policy, an insurance agent's going to make a whole lot more money on a percentage basis 
on a permanent policy than they will on a term policy. And so a lot of times insurance agents are going to push the permanent policy uh, in order to make more money when a term policy is a better option for a client. And so, but uh, sometimes it's good to have a large term policy and a small permanent policy <clears throat> in the same thing. Most permanent policies, if you get under $100,000 of coverage, you're not going to get preferred rates, even if you have preferred health. With Erie, um, if you'll get a term policy for at least $100,000, then they will let you get super preferred rates on a permanent policy, which is really odd. And so it makes it actually cost effective in those situations. So um, <clears throat> something to think about um, if someone's thinking, hey, I'd like $300,000 of term coverage to offset my $30,000 a year of income, but I'd like $10,000 of permanent policy. Well, that's an option. The medical exam is free. So what generally is going to happen is they'll complete an application over the phone with you or, or send you an application to complete. Um, and then uh, in general, we're going to complete an application either over the phone or in person with you. And then once the application is complete, if it's over the phone, we'll email them the application to electronically sign, or if it's in person, we'll do it there. Then we will set up um, a medical exam for them. The medical exam is at no charge to put free. Is it no charge uh, to the client? Um, a paramedical company will come out and they generally are going to ask the questions, ask health questions to the person. Depending on the on how much coverage they're getting, they'll um, take a blood sample and you'll have to fast for at least eight hours before that. So we always recommend doing it first thing in the morning. So you fast it all night, you just wake up and they're there. They will come to your house. Uh, generally, they're either going to come to your house, your office, or you can go to their um, uh, to their business uh, to do the, the medical exam. I always recommend that having the nurse and just come to your house because it's just more convenient. Um, they're going to draw blood. They're also going to make you pee in a cup. And in order to give it, you'll have to provide a urine sample uh, when they show up, not before. They can't store the urine and hand it to them. you got to put it in their cup because uh, it has to be warm. They actually put a temperature thing on it. You remember that. <clears throat> then they're going to get your height and your weight, and they're asking you a bunch of questions, something to note, pro tip, whatever you want to put there. Uh, most insurance companies only give you half the weight you lost for your for your um, uh, for your actual weight that they'll use on the application to determine uh, what what rate you get. But anyway, uh, so for example, if you um, weigh 200 pounds now, and that's what you're applying. You're saying I'm 5'11", 200 pounds, but you weighed 250 pounds last year. Then you have, uh, it will be a select or a standard, a select, select plus, um, or standard plus is kind of the terms used. And then you have your standard rate. And so that's a generally healthy person is going to get one of those four. Obviously, for best is best, you now it's standard. Then we have what's called sub, uh, substandard or rated policies, meaning you're not that healthy, so they're going to surcharge it. And they what they call table rated. You can have some companies do table rating one through whatever. Other ones use A, B, C, D all, all the way down. Once you get to a certain point, you're not going to, it just doesn't even make sense anymore because you're going to pay more in premium in a year than you want to get in death benefit. Um so the only way is if you know you're going to die and you want a tax benefit. And that's that's basically what you're doing. You're shoving money in and it's coming out tax-free to beneficiaries. Tobacco, you've got the same thing. And usually it's only one or two. You have, um, uh, preferred tobacco, standard tobacco is generally the way it's going to do. Sometimes you might have a select tobacco, but you generally don't. It's preferred tobacco, non-preferred tobacco, and then table ratings. Uh, basically... I can't remember. You, you can Google this too. I think basically for each table rating down, these are going to charge an additional 25% off the standard rate or 50% off the standard rate. So if you're table one, it's either, and the premiums at standard 100, you're either going to pay 125 or 150, depending on the company. Table two is either going to be 150 or 200. Table three, so it's either, and you got a 20, a 25% or 50% on top of it. So if I use tobacco, if I just dip and don't smoke, do I have to have smoker rates? The answer is depends. Some companies will allow it. Some companies don't. 
you definitely want to shop around on that. Uh, at one point in time, we had a company that if you smoked, they actually give you a non-smoker rate for two years. And then those two years, if you proved you quit, then they you could keep that rate. If you didn't, they jacked it up to the tobacco rate, which was pretty cool. Now, that company is no longer in business. <laughs> Might be a reason why. Um, but if you dip, yeah, you can get uh, a lot of companies will offer and uh, a few companies that we represent uh, will offer uh, standard plus rates. So not even standard, a little better than standard plus rates. If all you do is dip and there's no actual tobacco. And then the other one is um, vaping. How, what's vaping considered? And vaping is considered uh, tobacco use since you're just like a smoker because of the, the health issues that it hits. Um, application process. Um, once the application goes in, uh, what will happen is the uh, underwriters will look at application. Any doctor rec any doctors you have, they'll ask for doctor records. Once they get those doctor records back, they'll come through those. Any referrals that that doctor gave, they'll ask for the doctor records from those. They'll also run a pharmacy report to see what drugs you've been taking. Any drug, any physician whose name was on the prescription, they'll ask for medical records for those as well. So they're going to try to get a complete medical history for, for these people. If you haven't had a, gone to a doctor, then that's fine. Um, not a big deal. That's a good thing. Uh, life insurance. And so um, basically with most companies, if you are on high blood pressure medicine, it's controlled. There's no, there's no penalty. So if you can still get preferred plus or preferred best or whatever, ultra select. If you have high blood pressure, be controlled with medicine. Same thing for cholesterol. Some, some medicines, if you take it, you're dinged, um, period in the story. Um, so you have typically, so once they do that, then the underwriters will get it and come back with an answer. They are going to look at your motor vehicle record. And they, I guess they do look at credit a little bit. They're going to look at motor vehicle record. Uh, one of the other things that they ask about is uh, history, um, health issues and family members, specifically heart disease and um, cancer. Uh, and you can get rated on that. Uh, and then, like I said, motor vehicle record. Riders, you can get on permanent policies or life, common life insurance riders or the best life insurance riders. In. The best stuff is a very good one. Um, and the one with the purchase option rider, <coughs> that's a really cool one. A lot of companies, uh, Erie's to my knowledge, the only one that I've, I've seen that has it. That critical illness rider is a good one. Chronic illness rider, um, a long term care rider. So the Chronic illness is very similar to the um, riders, similar to long-term care rider, but um, one of them is true long-term care. And so there's some special IRS um, benefits that you get, contact your CPA. And then, um, uh, but it, generally it's the same type of thing. Um, they just depend, they vary on how much they're going to pay out. Some are going to pay a set amount, some of them are going to, um, pay a percentage based on your age and those types of things. Some of them are indemnity and some of them are reimbursement. So indemnity just means if you go on claim, you get the money. You don't have to have spent it. So you can just pocket it. Others, you have to, it's reimbursed. So you have to get a specific nurse that has some designations, that type of thing. And when you spend that money or if you have a nursing home, you spend the money, they will reimburse you for that. But you just don't, don't just get all the money. The area policy, you get all the money. That's one of the nicer things about that. You're going to pay a little more for those, but it's still nicer that you can just have the money for whatever you need. Because if you have a, a spouse or a family member come and it's reimbursement, you're not going to get reimbursed unless they're a licensed uh, nurse generally. And if they are, sometimes they won't. If you have it just the nimity, then your spouse, kid, nephew, grandchild can take off work, take care of you and still get paid. Uh, from your life insurance, which is really cool. Accelerated death benefits, a good one. Waiver premium is a good one. Uh, that's uh, they waive your premium if you go and claim. So this can be really handy. On term, it's uh, conversion options. A lot of com uh, most companies you can convert the term policy to permanent policy. You might want to do a blog on reasons why you'd want to convert your permanent your term policy to permanent policy. Um, but but the conversions on the term policy, the conversions, some companies have really good conversion options where you can convert up no matter when up to age like 69 or 70. Usually that's about the latest you're going to be able to do it. Some companies will say whenever you, um, you get 10 years to convert it. 
some say for the first two years, you can convert it to a good permanent policy. After that, it's a piece of crap. And so it's, I mean, it's just horrible, but hey, they can convert it. That's one of the things you're paying for when you have term policies, those conversionability options. One of the things that I recommend for folks is always apply. There's no charge to apply and you're not obligated to take the policy when you do apply. And if they bring it back, um, once you get it back, um, you can always say, no, I don't want it. Or yes, I do. And then the other thing is, is there is a, um, an amount. So it, uh, apply for more than you think you need, because if later you figure out yeah, when it comes back, oh, I should have done more. Um, it's hard to go up, but it's really easy to go down. Um, sometimes the policy can be effective when you, as soon as you do the medical exam, then if you give money, they'll give, they'll provide you coverage even if you die between the medical exam and the other one, um, which is kind of cool. Otherwise, your money, your policy is not active until the insurance company, not necessarily the agent, receives the money. If you cancel it, so the first couple of years in that life insurance policy, you get all the cash value out there surrounding uh, files, and that's basically paying the insurance agent. Policy.